So hello everyone. I'm Wong Xinjiao Wang, and I'm a master student in Chinese, uh, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And today I will present our paper detecting and understanding self-deleting JavaScript code. So self-deletion is a technique in which a program deletes its own binary file or any other resources after it starts execution. Since the program data has been loaded in the RAM, deleting the original file does not affect the program execution. It has been widely adopted in the real world malware samples as a traditional defense evasion and anti-analysis technique. So we found that the self-deletion can also be used in client-side JavaScript. On the web, the page's JavaScript code is passed into a DOM tree. It is then mapped into a JavaScript object and executed in the browser's JavaScript engine later. So once a script starts execution, just like a binary is loaded into the memory, the original source code containing the web page can be deleted. So in this work, we aim to systematically study this emerging clients and JavaScript self-deletion behavior on the web. So what's the security impact? We found that JavaScript self-deletion is an anti-debugging technique that tries to prevent or at least impair any attempts at manually inspecting and uh, debugging the JavaScript code on the website. So on the website, there could be numerous scripts included in, included in the page, so this a uh, script can also be included uh, another script. And this script can also be dynamically generated by some uh, function calls like the reveal. And what's worse, this code can also be obfuscated. So the, uh, this all prevents the security uh, researcher or, uh, or the analyst to um, uh, find out where the suspicious code that they want to analyze. So, uh, I think many of you have uh, known the recent XD Backdoor event, and you can imagine that the, this event can also happen to the JavaScript code, so that the security <coughs> analyzer cannot, ana uh, or very hard to analyze this code, so it can pre uh, reduce the chance of being discovered by the security uh, researcher. Yeah, so in this paper, we, we are the first to systematically study the how the self-deletion work. So the, Clients and JavaScript can be deleted through two ways. The delete host element and delete host attribute. The deletion can be performed on the element itself or any other ancestor element. For example, in the first figure, the script element can delete the script tag itself or it can also delete the type uh, tag that is his parent or even the body uh, tag that he, uh, contains the, the, the entire element. So depending on the relationship of the two script, we can categorize self-deletion into four classes, uh, by self, ancestor, and descendant. It's also possible that the two scripts are irrelevant. Irre that is not shown here, because here we're only showing the uh, self-deletion uh, types. It is also, yeah. Here we um, made two more challenges about the script, deletion, uh, script identification. First, it is challenge to map the script created through many different ways to the host container like the inline script or dynamically generated script uh, through the eval. Second, it is challenged to track the uh, dynamic script inclusion relationship because the DOM structure can be modified at the wrong time. So uh, here we meet several challenges in our research. The first is the uh, dynamic code. It's challenging to monitor and cover all the JavaScript code and its containers because it can be dy generated dynamically and through many different ways. And second is the uh, script identification, that the script may be introduced and deleted in many different ways. So yeah, also there, are, there is no direct mapping between script object in the JS runtime and containers in the DOM, which meaning that we cannot get the um, containers and the, uh, and the relationship to its script from the Chrome. Uh, that is what we uh, analyze. The third one is the code of obfuscation because the deletion uh, operations and other sensitive behaviors may be obfuscated and we need a dynamic approach to accurately monitor them. So we propose the JSRE, a browser-based JavaScript runtime monitoring system to study this client side script deletion. We first developed a dynamic script inclusion monitor to construct the script relationship we introduced. Then we use the JavaScript and the DOM mapper to obtain the element or attribute containers of the script. 
With all this information, we can successfully monitor the uh, script deletion on the page. To better understand the behavior of the script, I'm sorry, um, we monitor the sensitive API access um, uh, and then uh, give, give the output of the, uh, of the entire script. So for the dynamic uh, script inclusion monitor, we moni modify the JavaScript engine's parser to monitor the cause of the uh, JavaScript parsing function. In this way, we can monitor any script execution because any JavaScript must be passed before execution. For example, the uh, script element in the script element, the evil cause, or the inline event handlers, and the JavaScript URL. Yeah, we can also monitor the, and track the dynamic script inclusion relationship using the runtime information because, because uh, when they are passing in the uh, V8 JavaScript engine, we can get the star trace or the, any runtime information. Yeah. So to build the relationship between JavaScript object and the DOM element, um, we tag the unique script ID of a script to its container when it's being included in the DOM tree or passed by the JavaScript parser. Since we have the scripting relationship, we can also task, tag the dynamically generated script. For example, in this figure, there are three um, different uh, scripts. The first one is the, in the script, script element, and the second one is in the uh, event handler of the iframe um, Tag and the third one is the dynamically generated ones from the first uh, script. So for the second um, for the second script, it's easy because we can simply tag the script ID to its uh, containers or in the DOM in the DOM tree. And however, for the first and the third one, we 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 need to know the relationship that the third one is generated by the first script. So we can thus tag these two uh, script ID to the uh, corresponding uh, containers in the of this uh, script element. So to detect the script deletion, we hook the uh, DOM APIs for deleting the host element or the host attribute to check the deleted or the deleting script. Note that this check also uh, recursively applied to any child uh, element or attributes that are being deleted together. So we also hook the um, sensitive APIs to understand the relationship between the script deletion and the suspicious activities because we are interested in the sensitive uh, behavior of the script. So this script including the uh, client side stories APIs, the privacy sensitive APIs, or the network APIs. So we measured uh, about one million websites on the web using our tool. And the total of valid websites is uh, around 870,000. And uh, this, we found that self-deletion is prevalent in the world. And the unique uh, screening of the deleted operation is about 200,000. And we found that 42% um, of the websites have at least one script deletion operation. And among these websites, 61% of the website also contains the self-deleting scripts that we define, which meaning that the most, uh, if, the, if, a, if a website contains the, uh, a script that performs the script deletion, that uh, most of them could be the self-deleting ones. So we manually analyze the 600 scripts without the delete operation as a baseline and another 600 self-deleting script. We found that 92% of the self-deleting script in our sample sub nine, because it is also a, a very common operation in the, uh, for, for the normal script. And uh, there are several reasons of why people are doing this. There are third-party libraries like the jQuery use this technique to achieve better compatibility, because when, the, uh, when you insert a new script into the uh, DOM tree, as a base uh, function uh, library, the jQuery should not touch the uh, DOM tree and they should not modify the DOM tree. So after inserting the script, it will delete it after, after the uh, script is running, uh, start execution. And it's also, uh, can, it can also be used to protect the intelli uh, intellectual property by hiding the core code on the page. However, we believe the other 8% of the samples are attempting to hide suspicious or even malicious operation by hiding, the, by hiding themselves. The rating baseline is less than 1%. We further 
compare the API calls with all the normal scripting to 100,000 websites. We monitor the reported, we monitor the reported that this um, script performed 11 times more sensitive API calls and then, uh, than the normal script and six times more network API calls. So we also tried several um, popular filter lists that try to block this, uh, the, the JavaScript that we found that they are 5.6 times more likely to be included in this filter list, which all shows that the self-deleting script can be used and can have been used for hiding suspicious operations in clients and JavaScript. So finally, let's talk about an interesting uh, case study. We found that uh, there, there, are a, a, there is a group of websites participating in the same uh, online promotion or advertising network which pro provided the self-deleting redirection script for making profits. So first, uh, they define a track um, function that can send all the uh, information you get to the um, uh, malicious server, and first they will create the script using the document.create element, and then to uh, combine the data collected from uh, from the, the 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 parameter of the function, and then set to the script. And the then the the, the uh, script is inserted to the DOM tree, which lead to the load of the script, and finally, the script will uh, it will use uh, uh, event handler that is load which will um, automatically execute it when the script is loaded. And in this event handler, uh, it will delete the self by getting the parent node and remove the child of the self. And after, after that, they can call this track function to uh, get and track any metrics and statics. And uh, finally, they will redirect the, uh, the user to the promotion link. So in conclusion, uh, we, pro we are the first to provide a systematic study on the current clients and JavaScript self-deletion behavior in the real world. And we found that script deletion can be employed for anti-analysis, and we actually found that they are more likely to be suspicious. And uh, anyone, if you are interested in, uh, in our work, you can find our uh, system and experiment data uh, in our GitHub. So I'm very glad to answer any questions.